radio again with you. Please change the dial and see if you can find some nice music. Or maybe a nice lady interviewing someone who raises cats. And Gora cats. You can find it, please. a mean man to raise a chicken, I'll tell you that. It really does. I, I, I must admit that uh, of all the people that you see on national television, the, the, the one guy that I'm a true fan of is Frank Perdue. I mean, Frank Perdue is what he is. <laughs> and, uh, he looks like his product. Uh, I, uh, you know, there's been an old, there's, seriously, you've probably heard the old expression that if a guy, you know, marries this lady or a lady marries this person, after 25 years of marriage, they tend to look exactly alike. And that's quite true. There's a certain curious uh, metamorphosis that's in there. <laughs> now, uh, uh, I, I don't think, however, it's ever been pointed out of an obvious fact that I have noticed myself, that a man... Uh, who is de totally dedicated to his business, eventually, after 30 years in that business, tends to look almost exactly like his product. Now, uh, how does that work? Well, one time, I, I'll never forget meeting a man who was a, a, a manufacturer of zinc garbage cans. And he was very proud of his zinc. That's all he ever talked about. There's no way to talk to uh, Clarence unless you talked about zinc garbage cans. That's the only interest he had in his life. And I'll be damned if he didn't look like a zinc garbage can with feet. He, he was round and squat, and he wore a hat that looked exactly like a lid. You know, yeah, that's right. His ears stuck out. You just grab one ear or the other, you know, and then fling him out the window, you know, 32 gallons of potato peelings, and that was Frank. You know, Clarence or Elmer, what the hell? And, and uh, I think this is very true. Uh, and, and Mr. Purdue is, he's, he, if there's ever anybody who's ever looked like a plucked chicken, it's Purdue. He even has what looks like incipient wattles. You know what a wattle is? I, for, for a man of great education, David, I'm surprised that the lapse that shows up occasionally in your language, a wattle is that red thing that hangs down, waddle, you're talking, a wattle. Two T's, T is in Texas, wattle. A wattle are those red things that hang down from the chickens. You know, you've seen you've seen turkeys with those. Those are called wattles. I would suggest you look. Most people think a wattle is a guy that runs the 880, but uh, the the true wattle is a, <laughs> is a is this red thing that hangs down. See, and if you look carefully at Frank, he's beginning to develop these wattles, uh, and and uh, he certainly has a beak, and he's got the cold blue eye or the cold, emotionless eye of a true working chicken. That's right. And uh, that, that, that faintly amused look. Every chicken I've ever known has a faintly amused look around its beak. You know, you know, the beak turns in such a way. He may not be amused, but he has a faintly amused look. That's all. And so I expect any minute now, Frank, to come out and go, bark, 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 bark. They go tearing off. You see, he's a male. I absolutely, I have no question. Uh, and, and I can just see him with an entire flock that he is taking care of nicely. And uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't you see that? In, oh, of course. And so uh, I, I must say that the, as a, as a famous chicken man, I am. I, you know, I'm the only guy probably you ever know, ever know, who who did at one time one of his famous acts that he did. And I'm talking about myself in the third person here in showbiz. I think a lot of you people don't realize that I'm in showbiz. You think that old Shep is so friendly and homey that he ain't in showbiz. He's just sitting around here shooting the breeze, right? Well, any good showbiz person is, is, makes great attempts to hide that he is in showbiz, you see. So, uh, but I have to con you know, concede this is all I've ever done all my life uh, <laughs> that has, uh, let's say, put, put it this way, been productive. Uh, I've done a few other things, but none of them worked out. But uh, nevertheless, to get down to uh, why I'm involved in chickens, uh, why 
I, I, this, it may prove to be embarrassing to some of you people of uh, more than ordinary sensibility. So, uh, so you got to get into your role. Uh, the, the minute that a person, a really good chicken man, starts doing his thing, uh, you begin to sort of squat, and you you get a beady eye. You get a beady look. <laughs> is a chicken. You want to know what he's doing there? See, each chicken does, they have a different sound when they're doing it. Uh, that is a chicken who is uh, just uh, walking around the yard and is uh, pecking away at the gravel, that's all. He goes, this is, he's, uh, that chicken is announcing to the other chickens, I'm just out here chickening, that's all. Nothing special. All right, now, uh, when a chicken is about to lay an egg, they go... You got an egg. That's tomorrow's omelet. <laughs> now, you didn't know that I could do that, did you? Well, you see, this is all part of showbiz. You ought to hear me do my polar bear. I do a great polar bear. Yeah, the, nobody I know in show business animals, really. Uh, and so you want to hear a chicken, a chicken that has observed uh, a male chicken in the in the hen yard, and a, and, a, and a male chicken that looks, let's say, it has an interesting cut of the jaw, right? Or the wattles are cut interestingly, right? So here's here's where the chicken goes. <laughs> You notice the increased tempo? And uh, this is a chicken that is, uh, let's put it this way, uh, is uh, almost in the heat of passion. <laughs> she is telling that other chicken, that, that, that the hen, that, or rather that, uh, that male chicken, that rooster, she is telling the rooster over there that you've come to the right hen yard. And, uh, <laughs> now, now, why do I know this? Well, <laughs> that's another story, and uh, one which I will not burden you with. Uh, now, maybe you would like to know, uh, at one time, I, I appeared, as I said, I used to, when I, my early, earliest days in, uh, in showbiz, I was with a C&W group. You know, it's funny, all these people suddenly discovering... Nothing is worse than to hear a big city WHN DJ try to talk about C&W music. That's so embarrassing. It really is. You know, you know what that reminds me of? That always reminds me of my Uncle Carl when he tried to tell us about opera. It was very embarrassing. And he used to talk about this lady with a high voice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, that, the way he described opera. So, so you, you've got to be you got to be very careful when uh, when you're dealing with these true American uh, uh, products. So you you either know them or you don't. There's nothing worse than to uh, than to go up into Vermont and you're looking at this bush, you know, and then a local native goes by and you say, Hey, is this where you get that all that maple sugar comes out of this bush? Forget it. He's got you down as a mark, and uh, he's going to sell you. Uh, <laughs> He's going to sell you the state with a fence around it. Now I want to I want to show you uh, how the art form actually works. Now, uh, David, please, would you uh, would you please uh, look in uh, my collection of uh, no, no, give me Bonzo, give me Bonzo. He's you got it up in there. I'm going to show you something here now. Now I'm going to show you how the chicken works when the chicken is going. All right, hit the button there. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,
singing chicken. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Do you know that I used to used to do that in in uh, in showbiz? I, I, in fact, I, I <laughs> a part of the big C and W scene that we would do, and, and it was on the radio. We used to even have a television show. I would do the singing chicken. And these guys that play the fiddle behind me, he doesn't believe it. It's a fact. Where do you think? I'm not kidding. I'm actually not kidding to you. I'm, I'm telling you the absolute God's honest truth. <laughs> and I hold up my hand. You don't learn this uh, just like that. See, the whole, the whole thing about a singing chicken, the Carl especially, is that he tries very hard, but he can't quite hold the beat. And then he catches up with it at all times. You notice that, see? That's what makes a singing chicken work. And this chicken, which I just did for you, was a very big famous star on a CNW live radio show of which I was part. I was just a, I was not the MC or anything. I played the bass and I sang and did, did other things. And I was called Cousin Gene. <laughs> I was sponsored by Purina Chick Job. And we used to have Carl would come on, see, and he was the the the. the, the um, in fact, we had an MC, see. The Merle. And Merle would come on. Now, you stay around here, or well, you're going to hear some real, real important stuff. Uh, Merle would come on, see, and he'd say, Well, ladies and gentlemen, he said, uh, Fellas and gals, of course, this is 5.30 in the morning this show came on. It was a wake up farm show, CW Music, and it was directed to thousands and millions of homes all around out in the Midwest where, you know, they get up at 5.30 in the morning to feed the chickens, milk the cows, and all that stuff. And um, we were sponsored by Purina Chick Chow, as I said. And so Merle would come on, and uh, Merle was the leader of our group at this time, see. In fact, uh, later on, he left town hurriedly under very difficult situations. Uh, and I said situations, not a situation. In fact, all three of the ladies arrived almost simultaneously, and Merle left and went out to Hollywood and became very rich and famous, and that's another story. I don't know how he had ever handled all three of those ladies. But he was replaced by Chuck. Chuck Acre and our group then mysteriously became known as Chuck Acre and his Colorado Cowhands. It was the same crowd. And uh, however, before that, we were known as the as the Arkansas Whoopie Boys, uh, Merle, and uh, <laughs> we suddenly moved to Colorado. However, Chuck uh, Chuck would come on or Merle, see, and, he, and and we had the we had what we called the commercial break, right? And so uh, Chuck would come on and say, "Well, uh, well, gang, it's time now to hear from." That ever loving, ever laying chicken, Carl. Uh, Carl, our, our famous purine chick chow chicken, uh, just had his breakfast of chick chow, and he'd love to sing for you. And how about a little patriotic music, Carl? Let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, now now you, you can see that I'm legit. I'm not kidding you. And that used to come on every morning. We we do things. For example, once in a while, like say, uh, when we had, we, occasionally we would do a Sunday morning show and Carl would sing a hymn. Well, yes, very, it was a very pious chicken. He would do, uh, one of my favorites uh, that Carl used to do was, <laughs> He used to do Rock of Ages very nicely. And, uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you didn't know I had this talent, did you? Well, all right. Okay, you just tap me, man, and you just you just run the, you hit the mother load of showbiz. And uh, nevertheless, when this thing, uh, when this thing would go on, you should see what happened. Uh, all over the Midwest, of course, Carl was getting these fantastic fan letters, including some from very amorous chickens. Who would hear him, see? 
<laughs> yeah, he was sort of, you know, he was kind of like the, uh, well, uh, how can I put it? Uh, it's very difficult to say uh, what the parallel would be. He was kind of like the, uh, oh, uh, the Mick Jagger of chickens. I mean, he had charisma, fantastic charisma. And, uh, and we used to get letters from farmers who would say that they gave their chickens, uh, after hearing Carl, uh, they gave their chickens Purina, a special laying chick chow, and uh, they couldn't get them to sing like that. And they'd be very mad, you know, how come, how come I can't get my chickens to sing? They, they actually took it literally. They thought that he sang because he, drank, you know, he ate the Purina chick chow. So it became a very popular part of the show. Every, every couple of days we'd have a visit from Carl, and I would come on, see, uh, I was supposed to be the owner of Carl. And so, yeah, Merle would say, hey, he said, hey, uh, hey, Cousin Gene, I see you brought, uh, I see you brought Carl along in his cage. And I'd say, yeah, that's true, Merle. And, <laughs> and he'd say, he'd say, well, how come you brought him into town? He don't know he to come into town till Wednesday. By the way, part of all c w music, as is part of all uh, folk music, is to always talk off mic. Oh, that's very important, see? So when you're tuning, you go dong, 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 off mic, you know, dong, dong, dong. It goes like this, see? Well, you're, you're always tuned up in the middle, see, because that gives a certain authenticity to what you're doing, even though both you and the audience have solid lead ears and cannot tell whether anything is in tune anyway. You pretend you're tuning it up, so you go... Yeah, yeah it's okay. All right, let's... Uh, how about the... How about the Wabash Cannonball? How about it, boys? So, so that's the way it's done, see? <laughs> now, he turned to me, see, and he'd say, uh, I'd be way in the back there with my bass, see? And uh, he'd turn around, he'd say, Hey, uh, hey, uh, hey Cousin Gene, uh, did I see you uh, coming in the parking lot this morning with Carl in his cage? And then I'd mess around a little bit, and I'd say, Yeah, yeah, that's right. See, like I don't even hear him. say, Yeah, yeah, what do you want? He said, well, how about, how about, I know he ain't scared to be on until Wednesday, but how come you bring him in a day early? I said, well, I've got to take him to the dentist. He said, oh, you got to take him to the dentist. I see. I had not trouble with his beak there. I said, no, no, he wants his braces straightened. And, you know, we had a lot of running gag. The car was getting his braces straightened and all that stuff. See, he was a showbiz chicken, remember. In fact, he's the only one that I ever know that had a beak job. Uh, so he, uh, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> You guys think Robert Klein is funny. What a joke. So, uh, nevertheless, he, uh, at that point, he turned say, and he said to me, Hey, how about bringing him up here? What would you like to do, Carl? And then I'd say, Well, just a minute. i got the cage open. So I'd open up the cage, and you'd hear, <laughs> He'd start, you know, he's running around the city. He'd say, <laughs> And then at that point, we'd bring him up to the microphone, and I'd, I'd say something. I'd say, Hey, there you go. See, he's, he's really getting nice, isn't he? You know, he's getting nice and fat. He just, look at, look at them feathers, Merle. And Will said, my God, that, that Purina chick chow is doing wonders for him. When you got him, he was just a scrawny little thing. And look at him now. I'd say, yeah, he's really beautiful. And he, uh, Carl, what do you want to sing today? I'd say, ah, I see. He wants to, he, 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 he says, as long as we insist, uh, he'd like to do uh, something patriotic today. Well, at that point, he would do the Stars and Stripes. That's all right. You don't have to care. <laughs> Once in the show is enough. Uh, so Carl would make his appearance, and he would thank his fans. And, and what used to really get you, though, was about every couple of months, a, a great delegation of farmers would arrive to come to see the show in the morning, and they would all want to see Carl. Well, they took it literally. Uh, it's absolutely true. There was, a, there was a Carl, and he did sing. And they wanted to see him. Of course, and always on that day... Uh, Merle would have to meet the farmer and say, you know, I, I told Cousin Gene to bring him in, but, you know, Carl's got business on the farm this morning, and uh, he just couldn't come in. And uh, just awful sorry. And then I'd have to apologize to him. See, and I'd give, I'd say, and they'd come up. I'd actually had a guy come up to me and say, you know, would you please tell Carl just once that, uh, that if, he, if he would sing, uh, if he would sing Red Sails in the Sunset, my wife would be awful proud. She loves that tune. She'd love to hear. She loves the way Carl sings. And would Carl please sing Red Sails in the Sunset? And I'd say, well, fine. I'm glad to hear that, Caleb. And I'll do that. <laughs> I'll talk to him about it. I don't know whether he knows the tune, but he's getting a lot of new arrangements in from New York this week. And I imagine he ought to, he ought to, be able to do something for you there. And uh, so uh, Carl was a very big chicken. 
Now, I'm surprised that all of you out here think I'm making this. And I'm sure that you do think I'm making it up. But if you do, you'd be making a very big mistake because people out in the Midwest, and it was never announced that I did it, remember. So people out in the, in the Midwest, a lot of people remember Carl the Singing Chicken. And uh, if you said, well, Gene Shepard, does he do that? Well, say, what do you mean, who's this, you know? But I was never referred to as that. I was always Cousin Gene, you know. And they assumed that's G-E-N-E, you know, some guy from Rabbit Hash, Tennessee, uh, which was about as far away from where I actually am from Chicago. You see, most of the best C&W people never saw the farm. I hate to tell you that. Merle Haggard is not a country boy. <laughs> I'm just sorry to break it, that one in. And, and, uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, Carl became very big. And I think the the uh, the the uh, the biggest thing that Carl ever did, though, was that Carl at one point uh, won a major award. Yes, he did. Uh, that, that, that there was a big radio station that was called WLW out in the Midwest. They had a big a big contest that ran for one month to elect the most popular performer on the radio or on television, and Carl won going away. Now, of course, the presentation ceremony had to be held in private, uh, <laughs> but but the day that Carl got that, they did a whole show of Carl. A uh, Carl came on. He sang all his, all his old favorites. He sang the Stars and Stripes, and he sang all of them. He, he used to sing uh, uh, particularly patriotic music. He liked that, and uh, Carl was very patriotic. Uh, Rooster, he sang well, and and another thing Carl used to do very well. Carl used to sing a great deal to Handel's Messiah. Well, no, he 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 did not approach it. And remember it now. Wait a minute. You're being very, you're being very uh, very hypocritical when you say that. After all, all of little the little creatures of the earth are God's creatures, and uh, so is poor little Carl. And to 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 say that because Carl did not sing, like uh, say Mick Jagger, in in your opinion, I think he sang better. But uh, <laughs> I mean, for being a chicken, he yeah, it was uphill all the way, you know, and he had to work on that. And uh, since he was uh, a, a chicken, uh, Carl, Carl would pay his respects, uh, to, you know, to religion. Now, uh, I ought to do that some Easter for you, for those of you out there who might enjoy it. However, uh, I'd like to show you that this is not a talent that's taken lightly. Do you know that, that are, are all around, I guess most of you in the East don't know about this. Do you know that they have fantastic competitions that are really tightly fought competitions? You don't see it here at Madison Square Garden, but it would be great to see Howard Cosell once do the play-by-play -play on, let's say, hog crawling. Now, well, hog crawling, by the way, you know what hog crawling is? Most people don't know that a part of hog crawling, of course, is also imitating the hog. You don't just come over, hey, hog, you know. He doesn't come over when you just do that. You want to hear a lady doing some top hog crawling? Hit the button, please. First thing you do is let them, let them know that you're there. This requires volume. The second thing you need to do is to, after you get their attention, is to let them know that you're calling pigs. This is the second part of the call. And the third thing is to even get the little fellows that have just left their mama get their attention. So it goes like this. Woo! Caucus just got up and looked at the radio. However, uh, <laughs> now, no, no, no. I, I, I just, uh, I'm very proud uh, of my of my ability to to create Carl the Singing Chicken, and I, I don't get, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not at all apologetic about it, and I, I admit that I don't get asked about it much at parties, and I don't, I don't, nobody can says, come up on a stage and do it, but uh, I'd be, I'd be willing at any time. I'd, uh, I'd be <laughs> well, showbiz, you got to do it. They, you know what that expression means? That's showbiz? That is showbiz, buddy. Showbiz is entertainment. If Carl, if anything else, if nothing else, was entertaining. And uh, Carl used to, by the way, Carl used to play the country fiddle, too. Uh, 
uh, once in a while. He had a little trouble. Uh, you know, it's not easy to hold the bow with the claws like that. But uh, he, he worked at it, and we used to, <laughs> we used to give him. <laughs> give, and you know who did that? We had a guy named Delmar, and, and Delmar played the fiddle. I don't know whether you've ever heard a really great country fiddle. That's an art form, man. I'll tell you, it really is. Uh, I was talking one night to, uh, to a very famous uh, concert violinist. And, uh, in fact, his name is Isaac Stern, in case you're curious. And uh, I was at a, at a club, and he was there, and, and we were sitting at the table, and he, he happened to uh, be talking. And I said, I said do, you, do you ever listen to any of the great country fiddlers? And he, says, he said, actually, he says, he says, some of those guys, he says, are unbelievable artists. He says, he, he, he just can't believe they can do what they can do with a fiddle. <laughs> and that's coming from pretty high sources. No, it's, it, if you've ever heard... Uh, all right, I'll give you a clue. I'll give you. I'll give you a test here. There is a man who is considered the Picasso, the ultimate, the extreme of all country fiddlers. He's famous. Who is he? If if you'll pick up the phone there, uh, David, just just pick up the phone and ask Lee who the greatest country fiddler there is, and she'll immediately tell you with no no cluing. You mean you don't know the name? I, I can't believe you. Vassar Clements is, is Vassar Clements is considered among country fiddlers, well, among fiddle players. You know that they have a national fiddle contest where all the great country fiddlers gather uh, from all over the country, and they they, they they have a competition. And Vassar Clements is is well, he's the A.J. Foyt of country fiddlers, and it's funny that he's hardly known among the average American. And yet he, among uh, aficionados in places like Paris and in Brussels, where they buy country music and seriously listen to it, the name Vassar Clements is roughly like uh, the name uh, Louis Armstrong was at one time. Uh, they can tell when, when they hear a record and they hear this sound, and the minute they hear it, it's Vassar. I'll tell you another thing. A friend of mine who was a great dobro player, a great... Uh, a great uh, player of, if I keep play steel guitar and all that, uh, played backup for almost all of the great, uh, the greatest of the Beatle records. And you probably wouldn't even know who he is. He's from Nashville, and he's a pure country performer, because the Beatles recognize those guys. Call Lee on the phone and ask her who backed up the Beatle records. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just to, from Nashville, just to see whether I'm kidding. Go on, call her. That's, a, that's an order, by God. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Uh, and, and, uh, and so for those of you who, uh, you know, who tend to put down country music, that's primarily, I think, out of ignorance of the field. Uh, there's some great musicians playing in it uh, and some really extraordinarily talented singers. Now, now, now Dave is getting the <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 